Okay, great. So thanks everyone for being here. Um, this is a hybrid meeting and due to um, Mayor Narkowitz March 16th declaration and emergency order that modified open meeting law, um, this meeting is at least partially being held by Zoom and um, it is being recorded. Um, so I guess before we jump in with uh, opening the meeting and our agenda, just wanted to see if there was any public comment. Okay, we also received comment by email, so feel free to um, put anything you'd like on the record that way as well. Okay, so um, would anyone like to open the meeting we'll move to open the meeting or do we have to i'm not even sure if that's the right uh, sorry um if you can move to open the meeting i can sure okay I'll second it great Give me a second <laughs> okay. to... aye everybody voting yes yes great yes okay so here we go um for people's refresher on the agenda we have our group meeting norms um, and we will start with the grant review. So thanks everyone for sending your scores to Brian. Brian, do you wanna let us all know what the yeah. top 50% are and who's in charge of presenting them? Yeah, so I really appreciate everybody getting their scores to me. I uh, tabulated them all yesterday. I just shared um, about five minutes before this meeting a, uh, Google Doc with everybody in the council. And I also have it printed a hard copy right here. And it's the top 50% plus one um, grant right here. And uh, I think everybody knows when the meeting is. It's Tuesday the 15th. Is that the right date? Tuesday is the it 15th. It's next it week. Um, and who can make it to that meeting? Everybody here. I know Jesse has a conflict. Danielle, Kay, my Eamon, can you make it? Uh, yes, I believe so. Okay, Garrett. Dana. I might be late, but I can try to adjust. Okay, well, if you're late, what about you, Jada? Can you make uh, the 15th? Can it be hybrid? Yeah, it's going to okay, be hybrid. I'll, I'll make it. Okay. Out of town, but I'll make it. Okay, it's going to be a hybrid meeting. So, um, so that's seven, and then we're missing Pete. We can add Pete on there. So we're just not going to have Jesse. Oh, no, that's on the, no. I know, but I'm home. All right, you can <laughs> eat, you can have snacks, you can do whatever you want. I just, I buy food on them, we do all the grant review. So for the, for the record, these are Rice Krispie treats. <laughs> <laughs> so 10 divided by about two. Oh, that's my favorite. You know me already. Good insight. Amazing. So there's 46 divided by 10. So like four grants a person. So does anybody want to, I'm going to start assigning grants now and I'm going to, everybody's going to get their, their champion grant to assign. And I'm going to also assign others randomly. Um, so everybody in attendance, so, can you? Brian? Yes. Before we assign, mm -hmm. can we just look at these and can we just have everyone like spend a minute to put eyes on the ground? Sure, I was just sure gonna go over a process and I, was, and I wasn't gonna assign right now because okay. it's gonna be a tedious process in front of everybody. I was just gonna go over ideas and thoughts and then we can have an open discussion. Awesome. So my idea would be to like, if you if you had championed a grant, you would present it on the on the 15th. Um, and I was gonna assign everybody four or five grants um, randomly after that. It doesn't matter what category. Um, and does everybody feel like that is a good way, a methodology to present grants next week? You said four or five? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. So I would say the exclusions should be maybe conflicts of interest. Mm -hmm. um, so there are some that I 
would not be able to present. And I think others might not be able to present. Um, and then I, I guess, do we, I, I don't want to like resort it by genre, but if there are like disciplines that people do feel most comfortable, like they actually are familiar with, you know, that discipline or genre, maybe they can like request priority for theater or priority for dance. Like, sure. Feel free to resort it. Let me, let me give you editor access so you can resort the sheet. Is Tulani coming? I haven't heard if Tulani is coming or not. I just um, think like, I always think of her when we are dance. doing dance reviews and- Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, not to assign like, but- <laughs> You can resort the sheet by uh, discipline if you want. We can, I can always resort it back. It's just by score now. Can I tell you the- Four, because I just I've only done five. Can I tell you the ones I'd like to have? You don't have to give them to me if you don't want. I don't mind. Yeah, just tell okay. me. I want the Black Women's Leadership Initiative Solidarity Project. That's dance, but can uh, you tell me the well, uh, uh, well? Do you want to go over stuff before we start assigning? But you can just go ahead, Jamie. I I saw these. These <laughs> I've been a little out of it lately, but these are the ones that I thought you don't have to give them to me. But I wanted that four six seven oh eight. Four six seven oh eight. And then I want to do the Transgender Youth Community Theater, which is 38856. 38856. And uh, I like the part where it was the... Uh, You're not going to get that one because Jesse and Danielle both, okay. both, uh, I see that. both okay. champion that one. Okay, well, this is very... You can keep okay. on going for more. Go what about Mother Tongue, first generation? I didn't... I, I, anything theater, I would love that, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was one that I championed, and I was actually going to ask um, how I how I can pass that off to somebody. Okay. So if that's if that's if that's what you would like to do, I'd love to I'd love to have you present that for. Um, okay. In my stead as as championing it. The Tyler Ray Abramson grant, because uh, Danielle can do the. Tr oh, if you, she can do it if she wants. Yeah, because Danielle and you champion that grant, Jesse. Um, yeah, so I was thinking since Danielle also championed that one, that um, hopefully she'll be able to do that. But then uh, okay. for the other one that I did, if, okay, um, the Tyler Ray Abramson. Um, yeah, 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 the Tyler Ray Abramson Tidewater. Okay. Do you want that one, Jada? Four four two five two. Tidewater. Can, is Jesse going to be able to present on Wednesday? No, I don't know I'm, if we're oh, gonna no, be. Okay. I think we'll be yeah. able to get all through all this on Tuesday. Okay, four, four. I'm sorry, which guy? It's uh called Tidewater. It's ranked thirteen point nine. Oh. It has Jesse's name next to it towards the bottom. Oh, I hadn't seen that yet. That doesn't mean I can't see it. I was just gonna oh. go by the ones that I saw, and I'm like, I'll do it if need be. I had uh, two more. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I thought that was the one that you that you just mentioned. No, oh. it was the a Black Woman's Leadership Initiative Solidarity Project. And uh, I can't really see the number very well. Four, six, seven, oh, eight, Jamila Jackson. Yeah, I have those two. I have you okay. um, for preference for those. Any others, Jada? Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, you said. And then. Uh, oh. Did you say Mother Tongue? That I, yeah, I got that, those two. I got those get two. That one? Yep. Okay, you got Mother Tongue one I couldn't do. And then there was another one. Sorry, guys. Uh, Take your time. Does anybody else have any other preferences while I'm, I'm here? That while we're doing this and Jada's taking yeah, her. I wanted I didn't get a chance to look at it, but it sounds interesting. Is that the, the Hill Towns Youth Recovery Theater Summer Workshop? Okay. Uh, and uh, okay, I'll put you for that one. And then I don't know what the lab is. I have to look that up too. But it's big. The lab? Yeah. It's by, it's called 50503. Five, zero, five, oh, am I saying that right? Yep. Yeah, I don't, oh. 40503. Four, yeah. Okay, that's what I meant to say. Oh, yeah. 40503. Four, four, Cultural. I got culture. it, got it, got it. All right, those are yours, Jada. All right. So I'll, 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 I'll send you, um, Jesse championed the Tyler Ray Anderson type. Tidewater, it's a dance um, grant. Maybe, do you want Tulani to have that if she confirms? And if not, well, I'll find a backup. 
Jesse, do you feel comfortable? Yeah, that, that's that's fine. Okay. So I'm gonna put T on that. Um Eamon, do you have any preference on anything? Uh no, there was one that I had put marked as champion, but I am fine to do whichever ones I uh get or people others don't want. Got you. I got that one. Yep. E. Okay. And then you've got that one champion. So any other one you don't you don't mind. Okay. Um Dana? Sure. So I'll do the two that I championed. And yep. then um the other ones that I felt I could probably present were Collider Fest, the 43293, and Intro to Arabic Music, 34132. I was interested in that one also. Was. Intro the, yeah, yes, it sure. was a really good application, I thought. It was strong. What was the first one you said? I'm sorry. Collider, Collider Fest. Fest. Yep, yep, yep. Brian, I'm putting this into the spreadsheet. Oh, um, thank you. Great. I'll have a backup. It makes me feel better when I'm doing something. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Kay, do you have any preferences? You can say no or if you uh, Yeah, so I was looking for the space bar. Uh, no, I, I'm I am pretty flexible. Okay. Uh, do you have a particular art form that you're more comfortable with or have any like experience in? Can't hear you. Um, I don't have any medium I'm particularly inclined to. I want to double check about conflict of interest because I think some people that I work with might be involved in some of the visual arts ones. Okay. But, uh, that's just something I, I'd have to double check. Okay. All right. Exclusion, conflict of interest. I'll, I'll look on that again. I'll go back to your score sheet and see which ones you, you uh, didn't score as a conflict of interest. Oh, I think I scored all of them. I wasn't sure if I wasn't sure what I was supposed to do. So I just, okay. yeah. Um, did you, are you, you're not getting money from these people that you work with though, then no. you're fine. Yeah. Cause if we said we could, you couldn't score grants that, you know, people then we'd so it's a small city. Like we wouldn't yeah. be scoring any grants. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Jesse's not going to be there. Danielle, do you have any preferences for either for, um, discipline or for particular particular um, grants that you found compelling? Probably visual arts. And I'm happy to look at um, resilient community arts, queer voices. Okay. Um, I'm also, I can do more of them if we need. Um, I would I would do Vic, Vic Casada's performance. Okay. Oh no, Garrett championed it. So Garrett should do that. Okay. Um, and then what was the other one you, you said? Um, resilient community arts. Yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking. Okay, got it. Yep. Um, and then I had two that I championed. Yep. The one that Jesse can't do. And then. Um, yep, I got you down for that one. Yeah. Happy to also do the Rochelle mural, the Florence okay. mural. And if there's anything left over, I'm fine with that. Um, Michelle Chicago. Okay. That's good. What about you, Mike? Um, I would like to look at some visual art, maybe multidisciplinary. Um, yeah, primarily visual art. Okay. And any particular ones beside, uh, besides the champion? No, I'm open to any of them. Okay. Um, cool, thanks. Uh, we're gonna missing Pete and Tulani and me and you. I'm just thinking about who's not here. Ah. Okay. And then and uh, Anna. Yep, and Anna. Go ahead, Garrett. What, what are you thinking? Uh, let me see what's still available. Obviously, I'll do the one that I championed. Yep, I got you down there for that one. Um, I also thought <clears throat> I could do the um, 
the Nutcracker, the sensory and family safe performance of the Nutcracker. That sounds very interesting. Yeah, I've, <clears throat> I found that uh, a really interesting idea. And when I thought about it, I was like, oh, I guess that does happen. And it's good that it does. So uh, I, I would like to learn more about that. So I want to Okay, that. got that one. Okay. Yep. Um, the cranky musical storytelling. I know. I I championed a cranky uh, like application last year too. Oh, so oh. that's not the MTV ones. No, that's crank anchors. I know. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's you got uh, three. That's three for me. I think I would also do um, the uh, Matumbilas animation series. Gotcha. Uh, that's Can four. That? Two, four. You can do five if you want, because it was four point six was the cut down. Um, how about "Hope I Die Before I Get Old"? The Mayakovsky rewound. Hope I die. Uh, it's near the bottom. It's three three zero oh, one two. John Pfeffer. John Pfeffer. Got it. Does anybody else want to do five? Dana? I can. Yeah, I can Daniel? do. Let okay. Me see. Uh oh, I got two D's on here. Oh. <laughs> You're writing all this down, uh, Danielle, mm -hmm. on a spreadsheet. Yep. And I there's two D's. <laughs> I just noticed that there's Danielle and Dana. I'm like, oh. Um, pick another one, and anyone else can pick a. You know. Well, I wanted to go ahead. I didn't, uh, I know I saw a little bit of this, but the, what is that, the history of Florence? Let me see, what's that called? That mural has already been picked. Oh, okay. Oh, was that the one we talked about before? Uh-huh. Okay, that's it, okay. Um, I'll add the weekly drop-in music classes, Northampton Pairing Center, 39339. 39. And there is one I have to just qualify myself because this guy's one of my former professors, and anything he wants, I'll get him in. So I should probably <laughs> say no to that. That's that's fair. I mean, okay, got it. Right here. Really, so anything Dana. he wants. <laughs> um, can I make a, a? Oh, you're just muted yourself, Kay. Dang it. Um, hear me now. Yep. Okay. Uh, can I make? You muted yourself again. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, it's when I, it's happening when I switch windows. Sorry about that. Um, to do uh, the Dreamweavers. Yeah. The I forget which one it is. I I would rather people to present things they're excited about because yeah. it'll make a much more compelling presentation. Uh, two five eight eight two is the Dreamweavers two five eight eight two. I'm sure Danielle's already found it. It's towards the bottom, and I I, I okay. love them. So I I mean I'm happy to keep going with this too, but I did want to just like make sure that everyone's champions are reflected here. Like we're kind of looking at everything as we go through, and just make sure that we're all in agreement that these are the ones we're going to present. Um, and if anything is like glaringly missing, like now would be the time to stop us. I don't even know I see her. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jada. You can speak no, up. That noise that hurt. Oh, there's really people cool. voting downstairs. Yeah. Maybe they're moving tables or something. All right. Sorry. Yeah, I'm scared of my shadow. Should I close the door? No, no, no. If it's okay, I don't I just thought I heard something. Close the door. Nobody's oh, okay. I'll be on the Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So everybody's on board with this methodology that we voted in last meeting. We've all looked and we preliminary scored all the grants that we received. I took all the scores and I took an average and I added them all up and then I ranked them. And this is the top 50% plus the champion grants from individuals. And we have 
Now we're gonna do an in-depth presentation on November 15th of these particular grants. Just to make sure everybody on the, at the meeting is on board with this. Um, and by in-depth, Brian means three minutes. Yeah, <laughs> oh. but we're gonna, everybody's gonna read every all of these grants in depth and have a much deeper understanding of them over this week, especially the ones you're presenting. Um, and uh, yeah, we've taken grants out that are disqualified because they don't fit within the guidelines and things. It'll make the, the meeting next week uh, a lot more, um, is this doing feedback? A lot, a lot more uh, meaningful, efficient. And uh, I think the artists are gonna, are gonna benefit from this uh, new methodology. Um, anything else about this? Danielle, I'll assign the rest of the grants, I guess, um, using that, the notes you take and then some of the notes I take in. And then I'll just send those out all tomorrow. And then everybody will know what to prepare. Uh, and I'll make sure I have a, a solid process that's uh, transparent and um, understand understandable to everybody. But I got some good notes here. And then I'll try to connect with Anna, Pete, and Tulani. Um, about if they wanted to, um, if they're going to be available, available to make it to the next week's meeting if they want to present. Brian, if for whatever reason they are not available and we know Jesse isn't going to be available, do we need to reschedule? Yeah, we need to have eight okay. either on Zoom or in person. So. so the goal is for at least one of the three who are not here tonight to present. Yeah, the, I, the, the Zoom, I, the, I mean, the doodle I sent out, everybody except for Jesse said they could make it. So I'm great. I'm assuming that that's the case. Great. Um, can you let us know what you hear from them? Because if I'm going to be late too, I can adjust to not be late if you won't have a forum so that I don't hold up. Gotcha. Start. Yes. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm going to reach out to them tomorrow just to double check. Um, to get some notes. What's here? Pete, Anna, Tulani. Maybe they thought, yeah, we're next door over there. Okay. Possible. Tulani, well, Anna and Pete to. told me they weren't going to be here, and Tulani usually zooms in because she's worked late, works late yeah. in like West Hartford. Um, and they have all had my number. That is yeah. And um yeah, so is there any more questions about this particular agenda item? Um yeah, could you just I'm so sorry, guys. I, I don't know what else I said. I I so I, I have right now for you, Jada, uh, and I'll have um Danielle, I have the performance projects. I have which is the mother tongue by first generation. Okay, yeah, say that, yeah. The Hilltown Perform Youth Performing Arts Got Program, the Hilltown Youth Recovery Theater Workshop, uh, Jamila Jackson Black Women's Women. Leadership Initiative mm -hmm. Solidarity Project, and the last one I have is the Cultural Images Group, Which the one? Lab. The Lab. Okay. Um, do you want Do you want another one? Yeah, I was going to do the Downtown Northampton Association. Is okay. that going to be that's a musical? Where is that? Mm, let, let me find see. it. I'm sorry. That is, it's music at a local farmers market. It's not a musical, I don't think. Oh, it just says music. I'm sorry. No, I mean, just want to let you know what it is. Is it Grow Food Northampton or is no, it downtown? downtown? DNA. DNA. Where is that? One? Oh, it's down at the bottom. Yeah, Elizabeth okay. and Ryan. 43861. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. Elizabeth Ryan, downtown. I wonder. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, that one was interesting. Okay. Okay. All right. Good. I had the downtown. All yours. You got that. Yeah, right. Take Those it. are all yours. You're five. Okay. You guess you're starting five. Noted as um, well. Everybody feeling confident about their choices, and then I'll assign to Eamon and Garrett and my or G oh yeah, Garrett's already got his five, so great. And um, I'll work on another document, similar to the one I shared before, um, our scoring and things to kind of a step by step process to make to make it as um as uh, easy as possible. To understand the process because I know a lot of people are new and it's we don't do it we do it once a year at this point and it's not as it's hard to get back on the bike sometimes after we haven't been looking at it a lot so 
Um, is it weird that I'm staring at my computer, not here? I should like feel it. I guess I feel it now. I'm here. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, any other comments or discussion about this agenda item? Good. You want to move us along, Danielle? Yeah, sure. Oh, sorry. Was did someone say something, Dana? Nope. I said good. Sounds good. Okay. Great. <laughs> so, um. So we have a grant extension request that Brian sent us along an attachment for. Um, I can also put that in the, well, does everyone have it or? or do you yeah, that's the one I can't do anything right? about because I, I love this part. Okay. So how do you um, just say- You, you just abstain, you abstain. You abstain. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Or recuse yourself from voting. Yeah, like the certain Supreme Court doesn't. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so it says, Dear Northampton Arts Council, on behalf of the Northampton Playwrights Lab, I'm writing to formally request an extension of our $1,000 LCC grant for our play by play festival. We would like to use the monies in late fall of 2023. We're all set to go with the festival with confirmed performance dates at APE's workroom in mid June 2023. However, APE just informed us that. Construction delays will result in the workroom being closed until fall 2023. Mm -hmm. We're now planning to produce our show there in late fall, probably in November, exact dates to be confirmed upon approval of this extension. We have these good reasons for this request. Uh, one, the above mentioned construction delays above all. Two, the many initial delays in receiving the grant, which threw us off our original schedule. Three, our commitment to presenting in Northampton and working with our longtime partner, APE, who are assisting us with other grants. Thank you for your consideration. Harley Erdman on behalf of Northampton Play Playwrights Lab. So um, would anyone like to move to vote to approve the extension or not approve the extension? I have a question. Mm -hmm. You gotta be quiet. Do, <laughs> um, do are they, uh, have they applied for a grant this round? Um, Does anybody know? That's a good question. I don't think they. I haven't. I, I haven't seen it. That's a good question, Jesse, because you can't fund the same thing if it's they're they're doing for that twenty twenty three performance. But <clears throat> let's look. Well, we can't fund the same project twice. But if they didn't apply this grant cycle, we could still grant them in fall twenty three or spring. Yeah, yeah, because it's for the next year. Yeah, they're not in the they're not in the final fit forty six. So, is it the same project though, just at a different date? Mm -hmm. So they applied in, um, for the FY twenty two funds. They were granted a thousand dollars. Yeah, but it's the same exact show. Right? Yeah, yeah, they're not doing anything. Everything they're just changing the, the date. Yeah, oh, so it's, it seems course. to me like it, if it's just the dates that are changing and it's beyond their control, uh, mm -hmm. it makes sense. Yeah, if it's the same exact thing that we're funding just later on. Right. Uh, we were, we everything as money. we had already approved it. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. okay. And they already have the funds. It's not like we need to reallocate them. Is that? Is yeah. That yeah. That's the, that's, we are a direct grant program. So, and we just, the checks just went out last Friday. Oh, good. Um, so they're there. And then they have to just send me a final grant, like report. Report. Oh, okay. So this is more about the reporting or, or yeah, yeah. how you see. Okay. Just, they're just, they're just crossing their teeth and dotting their eyes. Okay. Can can I ask a question similar? Yeah, sure. Uh, let me look. Uh, something thirty three Holly Street is four four two two five Resilient Community Arts. Aren't they going to be having the same issues? Because I got the notice from the Northampton Center for the Arts about some uh, construction stuff. So isn't it similar? Uh, I haven't received any notification from them. This is specifically construction in the workroom, so I'm yeah, not sure. Okay. There's only one part of the whole thing, and look, let's let's stay focused on this okay. particular uh, agenda item. Okay, sure. And then when they, if they notify me that they need an extension, then we can we can bring it up in the next our next meeting. Good enough. Okay. Um, I move to approve this extension. Second that. Okay. All in favor. We have Dana, Garrett, Damon. Daniel, Asi, Jesse, okay, good. Damon K. I I. So all of us minus Jada, who's abstaining. 
I'm approved. Great. Thank approved. You. Wonderful. All right. Thank thanks. you. Um, thanks, Brian, for sending that around. Um, financial overview. Brian? Uh, I shared a document with you um, with the email. If you have any questions, please, this is the time. Uh, we're financially healthy and we're doing really well because we received a grant from the Community Foundation last year and a grant from the Mass Cultural Council. Uh, one of our biggest uh, revenue streams is uh, ticket sales, and that has been poor since COVID, which is March 2020, is the last time um, we had strong ticket sales. We did sell tickets to Performance 32 this year, but it was a light audience, but it was a great show. Uh, there's a lot of different reasons why, you know, getting a local audience back on track to local arts events has been something that a lot of organizations are having difficulty with. So in response to this, this year, I also applied to a, a similar COVID um, funds from the Community Foundation and the Mass Cultural Council. I have not received word from them yet. Um, and most of those grants cover uh, Steve and Peter, our production team's salaries. Uh, we haven't changed our programming except, you know, during COVID, we did go, um, we did heavy live stream, but because of our experience with live streaming, we now live stream all of our shows, which is, uh, creates more accessibility and also like video evidence of all the interesting projects we do that everybody can watch forever and ever. But sometimes we have some conflicts with like rights and music and different things. So some of the things are like the audio is muted out. Uh, but right now I'm, I'm feeling confident. I'm feeling confident about receiving those grants. Um, but this is a, a, a quick overview of just one part of our fundraising, the Northampton Arts Inc. fundraising part of our um, organization. Brian, I didn't see the document. Would you mind sharing it again? Oh, sure. I sent it in the email, but I'll, sh I'll share it right now. Yeah, I didn't see to touch the email either. I saw oh, you did uh, your my... request on the agenda, but that was it. I forgot to do it then. Everybody, uh, no. There we go. Sending now. I think I just shared it with yeah, Danielle and Jesse because they're officers and then probably Eamon as well because they're on the ink board and I forgot to send it so my, my apologies um I have a printed copy for the in-person attendance but I'm sorry I didn't share it with the rest of the council so one line item on that document I just shared that needs to be voted on is our share of um funds from performance that should be performance it's not trans performance, but let's do that. Um, that's going to go to the PTOs. Do we normally give the entire amount? Um, no, we because we have, there's a bunch of costs involved with producing trans performance that we have to do. So the council, so we uh, I'll share like the financial um income and expense sheet of how we did with trans performance with ticket sales and sponsorship and donations and then the you guys will take a look at it and then decide what we are going to send to the ptos i'm sorry could someone tell me what pto stands for oh sorry parent teacher organizations okay. so uh Performance is a collaboration with the Northampton Arts Council and then the PTOs of most of the public schools in Northampton. Um, the PTOs provide volunteer labor, whether it's like having the Northampton football team set up the stage, which hasn't happened in the last couple of years because we've already had like professional stage there, um, sell like snacks and ice cream and things like that. And then we donate directly to the PTOs uh, funds that are are earmarked for arts enrichment in the schools so and we pick a certain amount depending on how well we did financially because there are like fees to produce trans performance like rent um a lot of technical uh support things like that 
and we also need to take money out to pay for our staff as well. But it's in a good year, we send like $10,000 and we divide that up into the, the six PTOs, 10, 11, and on like a bad year, it's like 5,000 and depending on that. So that's the one thing that's, I put a TBD on the, that sheet. And I just did it. I put the same amount as we had, we donated last year, which was $7,200. So that's an estimate right now, the 7,200. Yeah, it's an estimate. Because okay. I just, I we had a similar year as last year financially. So I right. just, but um, the council votes on it. I was just doing that just to have like a, a, a perspective pr picture of like what we have at our availability. And you, if you're looking at it right now, I can answer any questions. Between and we'll vote on it another time. Yes, we're not okay. bringing it up today. Okay. Um, I have a question. Sure. So it looks like we have sure. close to ninety-two. Sorry, Siri thinks I have a question. Um, <laughs> it it looks like we have close to ninety-two k in unrestricted funds, and I'm mm -hmm. wondering if you know off the top of your head how that number has changed, like in the past few years. I don't. Pre COVID, post COVID. Like, is I there a send, substantial drop? No, we've been consistent just Even, because of the, the, because of the grant funds okay. and the programming that the council helps when, during COVID when we did the COVID re, artist relief fund. So, right. But then our, our, so in terms of like how the, the role you like your team's work has shifted we're still producing like a similar number of programming or we've returned to re producing a similar number of programming. But in addition to make up that revenue, you're also basically doing way more grant writing. Yeah, I just shift revenue streams and we're doing more programming than we did before. So everyone is doing substantially more work for the same income because of, of scarcity. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, just like but, putting like them. We're, we're mission out there driven, right? To advocate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're mission driven though. So, but it seems like it'd be great to have like more staff to support this. Sure. It's like there's like an entire new revenue stream that is grants that's keeping us where we were. It's like you just kind of doubled your work. We're floating, but it's like again, we're mission driven, and then we're committed to like you know, in difficult times you have to make difficult decisions, right? And you have to rise to the occasion. So, um, and to me, you know, I, the idea of like a community is really important and in times, you know, you have to do that, but it's, I'm hoping that we go back and we also have the grants, like the, the sponsorship and the ticket sales come back. And then there's like more foundational support as well for the arts and culture, as well as government support because then it will make it, you know, make more sense and not be dealing with scarcity, like you're saying. Um, well, congratulations for keeping the financials consistent. Mm -hmm. That's a huge, huge, huge feat. Yes. I can I can do some run some reports tomorrow and then share that with the ink board just with like the projection but we're about right maybe a little let less like 10 percent 15 percent if I'm going off the top of my head thank you though Danielle I appreciate it so the restricted funds I just want to share that with everybody just for awareness so the J. Scott Brandon fund is the fund that we fundraise for and um Northampton High School students that can't afford music lessons can get elected by the music teachers there. If they cannot afford them, then the elected ones get uh, basically music lessons played by for the Arts Council. They get to go to um, Northampton Community Music Center or Downtown Sounds. And if they don't have the particular instrument um, teacher there, we pay you know, someone else outside of that. And that's there's a council that's at the high school, and that's a another um, school arts council project we work on. Um, the BJ Goodwin Memorial Fund is for any artist that is from or contributes to Northampton uh, arts and culture and wants to bring their talents outside of this area 
and go do a workshop or go perform somewhere else. Uh, and that's at, uh, that's at will. Anybody can apply anytime by just sending us a request to me. And then um, I bring it up to the board and the board, board votes on it. And that's usually like a plane ticket. We normally give between $700 to $1,500 to each request. Um, it's nice, you know, uh obviously we know what the youth poll laureate and the poll laureate that's in there just earmarked because we that's the stipend that we give every year for the, the poll laureate and the youth poll laureate. Does anybody else have any other questions in the financial overview? Jada? No, um, I was looking when you were talking about the North and High School part, and I was looking to see where it is on this. Oh, it's the J. Scott Brandon Fund. It's named uh, in memoriam for uh, a local musician who passed away about three years ago. Oh. And it was like the his interaction in middle school with music and band was what inspired him to like mm -hmm. overcome a lot of his difficulties. Mm -hmm. And that's why that particular scholarship fund is, that's why that, that came about. And that was, um, inspired by Steve Sanderson, who was that was his um his best friend and bandmate in um the band together. So and they, they we do all the fundraising at like we had an amazing event um at four Sundays where we had a lot of high school bands playing with local bands at the 33 Holly workroom. And I've never seen more high school kids out and parents in that room. It was like packed with like a hundred high school kids and then like it was a really it was cool. Cause there's some like really like cool band in high school that had a bunch of juniors that like everybody wanted to go see. So it was interesting. I never... you want to be a teenager. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so that's, that's it. And then we can have a discussion and then, you know, by looking at our thing, if we can do arts easy 2023 again, if, if you see that other TBD, if we want to come up, you know, and, and, and offer that, again which is another grant round in the spring that's similar to this grant round but uh is completely controlled by the northampton arts council it's not state we can come up with our own guidelines we actually have our own server to apply online that's a lot more e a lot easier to to manage uh we haven't done it since covid because of uh, covid artist relief um and then our financials weren't looking good in this spring so we 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 just and we didn't get our grant run down last, last fall so we just decided to to not do it in 2022 but we can think about that for 2023 because we do have enough unrestricted funds but we have a lot of expenses coming up for first night just to be to be honest so great thank you yep what usually is the amount for the arts easy for which has that been in the past? Uh, it goes between like again, it's like whether scarcity or abundance. So yeah. it's between like eight thousand and twenty thousand, which is okay. the highest I've ever seen it. And that's when we were like producing first night, and everything was like hunky right. dory with everything, like yeah, yeah, um, consistently. Okay. Uh, so I think after first night, if we do well, we can look at it and then vote on an amount. Mm -hmm. And then that will be abundance if it yeah. does well. And then if first night doesn't do well, then we have to see if we get those grants and you know kind of our hard costs yeah, for, to do. Yeah. So and that's another one. Just like the you know the performance, those are the restricted funds right there that we have to get together as a council and vote on how much we want to to offer. Um. So I know we haven't done a financial summary before for most new members, so I just wanted to go over that. And sorry, I was late for sharing that. Any more questions about it? No. Okay, so on to biennial special meeting scheduling. Um, I think we finally have a date. Yep. Ryan, do you wanna? It's uh, it? Sunday, November 20th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Nice. Wait a minute, what, what, what did you say? Uh, Sunday, November 20th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. It'll be a high, uh, I think we're gonna do Zoom or we wanna do hybrid. It's a Sunday. I'm going to probably just, I don't know if there's anybody staffing here on Sunday night. So I'm going to just say it's a Zoom meeting. I think that that's perfectly fine. So what are we doing that particular night, guys? I'm sorry. We're going to be discussing um, the the biennial okay. and the Arts Council's apology. 
to oh. artists and things like that. Okay. Um, all right. I mean, I'll be there. I'll be there on the 15th to present. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to say, I'm not quite sure. Um, sure. I have to go to a funeral. So I, I'm. No, I, you're. I'll be there if I can, but guys, I may just not enough. You're, you need to take your time and mourn. Okay. And uh, that is more, you know, just, yeah, that's okay. okay. We just need a quorum. And if we have a quorum for that, and everybody could be there. So. Minus one is okay. We have okay. we have a buffer now. You know, I'm there. I just maybe. Yeah, maybe yeah. No light. I don't know what to talk to. So yeah. Okay. No, that's fine. Um, I hope everybody else can make it. Okay. Um, I'll be doing so, some outreach and post about it and things like that, and then. Uh, do you guys want to have anything? Anybody particular that we should invite? All the people who spoke and gave comment at the meeting that took place last year. Okay. Um, it probably should go out to the artists who Artists, applied. Jurors, jurors. commenters. You want to meet Danielle just to help me coordinate this? Yep. Okay. I would, I would love to just, again, I think I've made this ask several times, if anyone has suggestions for how you think the meeting should be structured, um, please, please, please let us know, or we can discuss it now for a few minutes. Yeah. Um, since we have a little bit of time. We definitely have time. Any thoughts on how we should set this meeting up to be most productive and cathartic and useful and whatever else we need it to be. Is this first meeting sort of like an invitation for comment from the public or is it like an internal discussion of the Arts Council for how to deal with it? Because I'm looking like a two hour time window and how many people were planning on inviting and wondering uh, you know, how we'll get through a, a meeting of that size in such a short time. Yeah. Yeah. I also piggybacking on that. Um, I, I feel like we need to be aware that we had a lot of availability for public comment. Um, and so I would like to us to hopefully figure out tonight what the goal of this next meeting is. Um, so we're not rehashing the same thing that uh, we've made available in the past, but we're also, you know, moving forward because we had um, made some forward movement on the apology, but we're still kind of stuck in the middle of that process. I think we were, it was like a five part, uh, five part apology and I think we only got through like one or one and a half of those sections. Um, we have a we have a draft, Jesse, of like all of all of it that okay. was, we worked on in November, and then we had to stop meeting, and we were told that Google Docs is a is not yeah. permitted. So right, I I yeah, I, I remember that, but I don't think it was even mm -hmm. close to being in a place where we could we were going to make it as a public. Um, you know, that we were ready to send it out to the public yet. Well, so maybe the goal of the meeting is to share that process a little more with the public, share where we were at in that apology and what we hope to accomplish and then have questions for them as to how that would I don't know. I I think that we do have to have like a question structure so that for public comment or for people weighing in, um, we're getting feedback that directs us towards something with with both the apology, but also any steps that we need to take going forward to do things differently than we then you know kind of like because. We've done a little bit of an assessment of during the initial 
biennial decision, we kind of had our arms around what maybe we felt in that process was created challenges. So if we can avoid those in the future, how we can do that. So I don't know, maybe the goal is to come up with a few new ways of doing things that avoid similar types of outcomes in the future, plus to just let people know where we were with creating our apology and, and why we're taking so much time with that. And um, yeah, I guess just get some specific input on that, particularly of, of what would feel restorative to everybody who is involved. So to the artists, if there's something specifically that we could do or that they need to feel good about moving forward. Some, I don't know, so, I'm rambling, but. So, sorry, Dana, I, I just wanna clarify that I'm hearing you correctly. You're saying that we should reach out to everyone who was involved to get their feedback on what they feel like, um, you know, a restorative justice apology would, they would, they would uh, appreciate. Is that the? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if we're like process wise, if we can do that before the meeting, or if just that's kind of the topic of the meeting is to focus on our desire to make a meaningful apology and and what that would feel like to people to all kind of the characters involved but is that something that we can prep people for brian or, or danielle like process wise can we can we get feedback in advance or do we have to have we can't right yeah uh oh sorry go ahead you're danielle. muted danielle oh, you're muted. I suppose we could send out like a web form. I just don't know that that's going to be effective. And I would say we can actually have multiple rounds of public comment um, or audience participation. So maybe we want to think about doing public comment at the end, which we did at another meeting in the fall, which is where we like kind of went through everything that we could go through. And then we got, then we had public comment and a lot of that ended up being feedback mm -hmm. um, instead of like rehashing of old like the same things that we've heard. So um, that's one strategy that we used in the past that could be effective here. Mm -hmm. I have a question as somebody who is coming to this arts council like after the fact, um, I was not here when everything happened. Um, is an apology something the community is requesting of us? Or is that just something that we're offering up as a next step? Is that something that's like, that was already determined that we we need to do, or um, is that something that people are saying like, oh, you know, the Arts Council really should apologize? The, the Council of November 2021 decided to issue an apology and were prevented from meeting after we had begun drafting it. So this group will have to, you know, sign on to whatever that is, and we can have a conversation about whether this collective group wants to issue an apology or not, um, I think it's going to be important. I think it is also something that did emerge from what we are hearing from the public, um, as well as the artists themselves, as well as the jurists and um, the uh, basically everybody involved. I mean, like I say, I'm an outsider, but perhaps the emphasis shouldn't necessarily be on the apology, like we can make the apology um, and formulate that the way we see fit, but perhaps the emphasis or, or getting the public comment or whatever that we decide to do should be focused, like she was saying, on the way forward. Um, how do we establish practices or what, what do we do differently next time so that we can move on from it in a way that's uh, productive so that we learn from last year's situation? That that is actually part of the ap apology as well. Is that part of the apology? Okay. Yeah, uh, guys. You know, sorry, unless someone else. No, no. Okay. Yeah. You know, I looked through the stuff and I felt like I was having. Uh, I don't know. I felt very triggered. I felt like like you've been. Uh, I don't know what the word is. I'm sorry. Uh, flashbacks and stuff. And I wasn't. It wasn't here either. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, I just got some of the residue, but I've lived it in some way. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I, you know, I just started feeling a little physically sick with it too. And, and then I, and I didn't go through it. You know, you guys did. I mean, I'm on the outside, you know, I heard mm -hmm. about it, but I was like, can we all get along? That's what I was just without getting into it. And I come here and then on one part when it's like, we got to go through that. I can see the healing part of that. You know, the male copa, it's just like, you can't change what you don't acknowledge. And it seems like people acknowledge this. And uh, and where I am now, you know, I, I'm probably going to be in Texas, you know, at a funeral. Mm -hmm. And when I think about where I am and where they are, whatever, I mean, I just feel like fine. Like, guys, can we not get along with this? You don't even know a path of what I've been through in life or just even doesn't exist. So I feel that I've been emotional. That's why I'm like, I'm going to be emotional anyway. And this just happens to be the time we're talking about that. And then I feel like I'm, I'm there. I'm part of this community and I you know I want to come in and do whatever I can and appreciate that but it is just it is emotional and that's for me I can only imagine what folks when you were at the front of it so I think the part about anything you, know, you make amends you're like I'm sorry I want to learn from this how can I learn because and not just that I mean I you know I just for, for example when I was teaching in lockup and I didn't know the kid coming in and out I'm very did discipline is good, believe it or not. But anyway, the kid, uh, uh, Puerto Rican kid said, I just think you're racist. And it was shocked at first because I was like, oh, me, do you know my answer? But I had to just think, where is he coming from? This is lockup. This is what he see. And I just said, everybody get together. And then I went up to him afterwards. And I talked to him. And you know, the guards are there. And then afterwards, the guards said, that was just exactly what this kid needed. And so, you know, I was all, but, you know, I was just thinking about my reaction then. You know, so I can only imagine how how are we helping each other? Because right now, when, when I'm having a grief, everybody's like, are you okay? Are you okay? How are you holding up? So I'm like, how are we going to handle this for ourselves? Because mm -hmm. um, it, 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 it was a lot. Yeah. And, and some part of it can be great. I mean, what is it? Or what if the king said something, you just got to let the natural medicines in, get all the ugliness out, and then the natural medicines can send in the cure. Maybe that's what we're looking at. I mean, I don't know how we're going to preface this. You know, I don't know. I mean, anyway, I think we're Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Mm. That's really. Thank you, Jada. Thank you. I think that is very indicative of the truth that this two hour meeting will not solve it's not gonna be um it might be difficult to come up with a goal because there is a lot of heaviness around that and I don't think we can yeah necessarily get everybody feeling yes so we had begun drafting apology and we are not allowed to work on it until we convened as a group and I imagined that we could share that draft individually with the folks who had originally been working on it, have their comments or suggestions added to that document, which would be allowed, and then bring the draft to the entire council before, ahead of that meeting and have us discuss what is written and what is missing at that meeting. Um, we could we could look at a draft right now. I just don't know how productive that will be, but um, we do have a draft. Um, Brian, do you have suggestions about how we had we had discussed possibly going about it that way? Do you have any thoughts? Um, I you know, I've been thinking about this for a while and I don't have, you know, I'm, I'm waiting for the council to direct the way we're going to go because there's a lot of good ideas. I just think structuring this meeting is important, right? Um, and then, but we need to have consensus on how we're going to structure the meeting. Uh, I, I definitely want to mend the divide. Uh, it's important. And if the apology that we've worked on in the past is going to do that, then I, I hope that is going to be how we're going to go forward. Um, I can work on it more because I'm not on the council. Um, and uh, you know, I think 
presenting that and discussing it maybe for the first 30 minutes or 45 minutes. I, I, I don't know. I thought we would be ready to have an apology by that time. But I guess it, it's, it's not. We have to discuss process, I guess, more with either in this meeting and are in that meeting um, because there's not a consensus. I think. I do think I haven't looked at that document mm -hmm. in a while, but I, if you have Danielle and Brian and you're feeling comfortable, I think that would be a good, I think that proposal sounds good to review it and clean it up and then present that apology to start the meeting and then have feedback after. Um, is that what you were? Is that I'm, what I'm not proposing. I'm proposing like I want consensus because everybody. This is all of us together, right? We yeah. are all together. So, you know, it's it's eight ten. We can look at it now under new business, um, because we are at a public meeting, and we can make some decisions about it. Um, I just go ahead, here. I I do question the appropriateness of this body that this council in its current form apologizing for the actions of a former version of this council. Mm -hmm. um, I see the apology as being important and obviously it has like its own healing properties in its own place. But I for one don't necessarily feel it's appropriate to be part of drafting that apology. Um, for not least of which, like I heard about this after mm -hmm. I was already invited to join the council. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I mean, I wasn't, I didn't live in Northampton when it happened. Yeah. Um, and I think it is important to get the uh, context and the wording of an apology right. Mm -hmm. um, but I wonder if it's just sort of like getting stuck in the mud of the apology when ultimately what we need is an apology that can be presented so that this body can move forward with the art community of today. Mm -hmm. Something to consider. So yeah. I, oh. I agree. I propose that we move on to new business and look at the draft now so that at least Jesse and Dana, who were there, and Eamon, who was there, can all in a room issue feedback. And if anyone else, whether you were there or not, wants to contribute feedback now, we can collect all that feedback. And then I can refine and we can share it with everyone ahead of this all of you um ahead of that meeting as a meeting document um and then we can have a motion to approve like approve and share that apology at the meeting and if and we can move into discussion if there are any edits that need to be made as like a final round and if not then we can present it at that meeting our, I think that's a good idea, and our progress forward in in looking at that document today could ultimately determine what a schedule might look like for the special meeting as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so or at least an agenda, if not a schedule, or the structure, the structure even. Yeah. So when you're saying share it out, are you saying at the meeting and that's where we're telling people about it, and then that's it, or you're saying you're sharing it with people in advance of this meeting? I'm saying that we would share the the draft. So collect your feedback, take my best stab at working on the document alone. So we're not violating any open meeting law. You can um, work on it with me. Or with Brian. And um, then bring a final draft based on people's feedback now, or um, are we allowed to accept like one-to-one -one feedback? No. So yeah, based on feedback now. Um, and then share it with with everyone before the meeting as a draft as something everyone that needs being to be voted the on. council or everyone who's involved like the public comment folks so it it would be a document that is attached to the meeting and if it goes out to you all ahead of the meeting i think it goes towards the agenda but it would go to the agenda as a discussion item and an item to be voted on is your concern that like no, so I want to try to get is like before the meeting that's in a couple of weeks, are you sending this out to the people from a year or so ago that came or, okay, that's what I was trying to get like to understand. No, it would not be approved. We would have to approve it at that meeting. Unless we had another meeting to approve the apology and then just presented it at that meeting already approved. 
I could I uh, throw in one one thing. I I like I like the first part of what you said, Danielle. I think that it's important for us to maybe have fifteen minutes to take a read through this tonight, um, and have a you know quote unquote new draft. How whatever changes might happen tonight, going into the meeting on the twentieth where this it will be an active item that we will be talking about at that meeting. That is a special meeting for the biennial. And I think this is essentially what we need to come away with the goal of that meeting being that we have a final draft of this that we can then vote on at the next um, full right, special meeting. What's that? Should we have another biennial special meeting? After no, that? what I'm saying is it should be a line item on the next arts council where, gotcha. where we vote on, you know, vote, do a final vote and then ready to um, send it, you know, however we choose to send it. Sounds good. Okay. In the past, it sounded like the special meeting was more of like an open forum. Um, is there still room for like a public forum if, if the intention of the meeting is to draft the apology? Um, and I'm not like, I'm not expressing an opinion either way. I'm just-, just There will be public comment. And part of the conversation about how to move forward is if we wanna do any programming that would be actually a forum. It would like our meeting, unless we schedule it as such is not a forum, but there is absolutely public comment. Sure. Okay. Um, I, I I looked a little bit. Um, I, I I think when we're you know we're just gonna put the year because it wasn't this year it was last year right I mean all that kind of little stuff and then I have a it sounds really silly I'm sorry but I looked up. Iterated. What was that word? I mean I got the definition but. Uh, oh. Ongoing. I mean, I was just looking. I mean, I didn't know if you got it as what, a Google what, Doc. Uh, the first paragraph. Iter iterative. Yeah. Second line. Yeah. And. Uh, oh, that, that has nothing to do. That's not the. That's just. Uh, so, Brian, you shared topics. it. Can we go to it as new business? Can we move on? Yeah, yeah, to yeah, yeah. New business? OK, great. So I think it's important to name uh, just reiterate what Jesse said this came in response to all, like the many hours and many emails of public comment that we did receive last year and the format of this apology is based on a document that I shared in the chat and that Brian can share with you all there um, which is like a how to apologize or oh, how to give a genuine mm -hmm. apology document I've shared it before and that was suggested by one of our board members at the time who's now passed, Ken Alexander, as a useful framework and a restorative framework for an apology. So that is the template that we used to create this draft. I, I and, agree with this. Oh, sorry. And just so you have a sense of the structure, we moved through each, rather than, because there are so many levels of impact, we didn't say, I'm sorry to everyone, name the heart and hurt and harm to everyone, name the impact to everyone, take responsibility to everyone and commit to doing better to everyone. I think if we were gonna do a general apology, we could have operated with five paragraphs. What we did was in paragraph, in one paragraph, we did an apology to the jurors in which we literally said, I'm sorry, named the hurt and harm, named the impact, took responsibility and committed to not doing harm again in each specific instance. So okay. there's like five sentences per paragraph around that okay, for okay. each of the, the audiences harmed. Um, there's a to-do of, which I think Jesse raised, you know, a year ago, naming uh, some kind of apology to Jason specifically who had to raise this and ended up getting death threats as a result. Um, and then also naming how to apologize to the actual indigenous um, community members who came forward. And then if we wanna make a broader statement about anyone who was um, excluded based on our process. And those are the ones that we did not yet draft. Um, so, um, 
the first paragraph is anyone who is excluded by failed outreach. Then we did a section on those who are affiliated with the biennial, including the artists, jurors, and partners. Um, can I just say this? I, first of all, I really, I, I do like it. I mean, I, you know, I mentioned I worked at Brightside with kids and we used to have that thing we used to put in our pocket, the thing to apologize. I do. And one of the things that I don't know if we have it here, may not want it considered, but it was also a thank you for the, not the way in which it was brought up, but for bringing it to our attention to make us grow from this or something, thanking the person. Mm -hmm. And then, and then thanking that, well, this kid, thanking them for accepting it. It was just something like that. I don't know if we put that in the letter. I just, perused it, I just got it tonight, but uh, because I, you know, I feel like we're gonna grow for that no matter how much it hurts us. I think when we used to do those things, we'd say we're gonna be going on some things that may take us out of our comfort zone and all that. And that's okay, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but we're gonna go, we're in this together and we're gonna try to, to heal from that. But um, commit to not doing it again. our best to try and to recognize it. and when we're wrong properly admitted oh that's 12 steps sorry guys Should we offer reparations? That's a not to me, but some people call that a loaded word. What's another word for reparations? Uh, should we Maybe. offer reimbursements for for costs incurred? Some people did have some expense presenting it and all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, we did talk about that a little bit, um, you know, last last year. I don't know that we ever uh, ended up. Yeah, the another word: corrective, remedying reformative, counteracting, amendatory. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, reimbursement. What did we, is there like a ballpark amount of what would it be to each artist? We can do it like, Robert. like per. Well, it, I, I, think, I think the tricky part is it depends on the, it depends on the artist's medium. It depends mm -hmm. on, you know, some of the works needed to be we required that the works needed to be framed and so there was cost incurred for the framing process that the artists wouldn't have had to do if they were not going to be showing it but that's for you know works physical works um, there wasn't that type of cost required for uh you know writing the poets yeah mm -hmm. um so there's there's a wide, there is as wide a range of, um, you know, options on that that there are for the for the mediums that were in it, and no matter what, there's not going to be a cost per hurt. Um, not saying that we shouldn't do it, but I'm I'll just saying that there's never going to be one thing that we can provide that will uh, be a salve to everyone. Mm -hmm. How many artists did we have confirmed participating? Does anyone know? Um, now at the top of my head. Because I'm thinking we were, we were proposing, I mean, I don't know how people feel about 
not having a spring grant round, but that could be allocated if, if we decide right. that that is necessary. That's what I was wondering, the arts easy potential money. But I do also think that that is in some ways a separate item from the apology itself. It's related, but it's more of like a step There's forward. Also there's also a doubling down on the negative impact if we were to offer um, monies to people um, and not include people that were uh, that were hurt but did not have to put out any money right I think and it's a I think it's a hmm we're then not doing the spring grant round, which also is then kind of hurting the arts community potentially mm -hmm. too in a different way. So maybe that is something to be ex explored after we get through the apology and it might be helpful to like read this together just to bring yeah. mm -hmm. all the harm um, to the fore. Um, I think we should read and not have comment and then come back and comment instead of stopping every paragraph, if that's okay with folks. Mm -hmm. sure. Does anyone wanna read it out loud or should we just read it to ourselves? Let me try to read it out loud because I wasn't here. That way I'll learn it if that's okay. Mm -hmm. All right, is that all right guys? Yeah. yeah. Okay, this, uh, the draft, uh, this is a preliminary statement based on feedback we've, re we've read and received thus far. This is the beginning of an iterative process of accountability and transparency. We'll be listening to the public comments at this meeting with the intention of hearing and understanding the impact of our decisions have made on the community. This is a living and breathing document and an ongoing process that we will continue to address in the future. This document is based on the how to apologize framework, framework shared by, by us with the former council member, Kent Alexander. We need to, one, apologize. Name the hurt, harm, cause. Three, name the impact of that hurt, harm. Take responsibility by naming our actions. And five, commit to not doing the harm again. We, the members of the Northampton Arts Council, issue the following apology to all those impacted by the council's past behavior, including but not limited to the production and cancellation of the 2021 Northampton Biennial. We apologize to all communities we excluded by the failed outreach attempts, not only for the biennial, but any art calls that have happened during our tenure on the council. We especially apologize to those who hold identities that have been historically excluded from the arts in Northampton. And in the case of this biennial, we especially apologize to the local BIPOC communities. We apologize to all affiliated with this, with this year, that year's biennial, including the artists, jurors, and our community partners. To the artists, we apologize for taking away the opportunity to have your work on view as part of the biennial. We acknowledge the time, effort, and expenses you put towards your participation in this event and apologize for our part in requiring you to lay out your resources. We also apologize for the last minute nature of the cancellation and our delay in finding the right words to explain why we made this decision. We can only imagine how frustrating and disappointing this was for you. To the jurors, we apologize for bringing you into a flawed process of the biennial. Internally, there were numerous conversations about the impact of a blind jury. Members of our equity committee made their recommendation to the entire council that the process for submissions for any programmatic endeavor include an optional question for artists to disclose their identity and how their identity impacts their creative practice. We employed this option to self-identify for several other initiatives since 2019 and use this information with the intention of centering BIPOC artists in our community. 
one of the jurors informed us that the volunteer biannual coordinator did not permit the judges to use any of the identity information in their selection process. We apologize for that misguidance and acknowledge that it does not align with our equity statement uh, or the intentions of the whole council. We believe that applications should have been considered holistically and apologize to all the artists whose work was overlooked because of this failure in our process. We're sorry that we didn't find a way to bring the jurors into the conversation ahead of the meeting on September 29, 2021. We regret that our process was not inclusive of your experience, expertise, and voices. Oh, this is so heartfelt, guys. Um, we apologize specifically to Alvita, mm -hmm. who raised a red flag about the blind submission process with the intention of making the review process more equitable. We're sorry your request to change the process was shut down by the volunteer bi biennial coordinator. We apologize to Jessica for not responding to comments that made claims about your identity, work, and educational background. We're sorry that we didn't intervene when comments that erase your identity as an Asian American were made during the September 29, 2021 meeting. We're sorry that members of the council, oh God, this is emotional, What's that word? Tactically or verbally tacitly. affirmed? Tacitly or verbally affirmed comments that perpetuated racial stereotypes about you or not by not intervening. We apologize to everyone involved in the biannual and everyone in our community for making the cancellation decision on such short notice. We apologize that we as a council did not see the red flags about the biannual earlier in the process. We regret that we did not see the issues around accessibility and outreach, production and logistics and our evaluation guidelines and process early enough in the process to make changes to our practice, gain input from those involved or adjust our timelines to accommodate these concerns. We apologize that we took away an opportunity to display local art for our community members to see at this time. We know that many community members are looking forward to an opportunity to view art together in public after 18 months of isolation due to the pandemic. We're sorry that we couldn't put on a visual arts event that brought our community together while honoring our equity statement this year. I think I'm gonna have to pass the reading, guys, if you don't mind. That's fine. That's all that we had thus far on our agenda was to write, or the request was to write a section specifically to Jason, and then also specifically to the indigenous community that came forward. Um, or I guess it would be indigenous community that came forward first, and then specifically to Jason within that community. Um, but we we never can meet, we never got to meet to actually finish the conversation. Does anybody have any comments or or additions to these sections we need to work on to Jason and the indigenous community members came forward? I didn't really understand. It's because I'm new here. I didn't understand who the jury and blind jury were, that kind of stuff. Um, I guess. But. The jurors are uh, three individuals that the biennial subcommittee chose to look at all the art. You call them jurors, okay. Mm -hmm. And the blind juror is what? Who's uh, blind, no, blind jury. Go ahead. So the blind juror, the, you probably will do a better job of explaining it, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> so there's ways to like, um, to look at something and blind means you don't know any personal identification about you just look at the visual art and you already look at the poem and there's no personal identity it's like uh number one is like this poem like to whom a bell tolls we don't know who wrote it uh but the way so that's a blind jury if you don't know the identity of the individual and then uh a jury with information would like pro provide like name um, these optional questions that were on our application, which is self-identifying if you're from a historically marginalized community, um, how has your like uh, life uh, impacted your art? And there's a third one, which I can't remember off the top of my head. And that, that was actually on the application for the biennial, but wasn't included with the, to, wasn't given to the jurors when they were looking at the. Uh, I think it was given to them, but they were, 
I bel- it might be worth revisiting Alvita's email. Sure. I think they had access to it, but they were not permitted to use it in the evaluation. And I'm not sure how that works, but clearly there was like confusion. Wow, guys, I just, when I was reading that, I don't know, I got emotional. I was just thinking about when we're talking about that. I felt the sincerity of the apology, but all of a sudden I was just thinking about, I think something went viral on TikTok where there was these kids, different audience from children to adults, and they were watching something on Disney about this mermaid and they're watching it and they're just watching. And then the mermaid comes out as black. And it was like, they had no idea. And the tears and the excitement and everything, it was like, I don't know what you call it. It's not like a blind, but it was like, I, I don't know if that was, I don't know. I don't know what it came in my mind, but I was just thinking about, I was thinking about that. Like art is art and it's, I don't know, it's to be appreciated and yeah. um with regards to the, the 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 two sections, do you think we can parse these out to other things, which is like we need to, if we're if we're if we're like affirming Jason in the indigenous community, does that have to be part of the apology? Are we apologizing to, because we apologize. I do think we need to apologize, as Danielle pointed out, Jason really came forward, was really exposed in this process and received so much hate directed towards him. And it was difficult for us to, I think that, I do think we have to apologize in some way for just him he tried to come forward and bring things up in one way. And I think he really had to just go through a lot to bring this to our attention and to be spokesperson. So I'm not sure how to phrase that, but I do think that apology is necessary into the indigenous community, an apology for the disclosure, like, you know, they're, I feel like that's addressed a little higher up. Yeah, that that could be true. But we can we can make it. I yeah. think particular this section was specifically to the group that came forward and had to sort of like publicly disclose their trauma, mm-hmm. um, and past experiences with exclusion so, in the arts. Like that, I think was who that was. So that's to me that's an affirmation, not an apology. Like for naming an apology. And I, obviously I appreciate all of the indigenous community coming forward, forward, but are we apologizing to them? I understand the apology to Jason now. It makes a lot more sense to me. That could kind of go along with what you were saying, Jada, that that, that could be a, a thank you affirmation as that is still related to an apology. Okay. Because, yeah. you know, as one who... Uh, I think I said once, I'm a, my character, Ida B. Wells, she's a woman who refused to be quiet. Mm-hmm. And she was bringing this stuff up. And I was just thinking when she was, you know, even just talking about lynching, even Black people are like, shut up. We don't want to hear that. You know, we don't want to hear that. Shut up. And so she was kind of ostracized that she, and she just said, that, you know, so if I do it by myself, I will. So this person to me is a brave person for bringing it up. I'm always being considered a troublemaker. And then I had to make it positive and say, well, you know, good trouble. <laughs> uh, so I I can only imagine what this was like for this person. So for us to put that and say, thank you, because, you know, we've learned and I'm sorry you have to go through this, but you really did help. So I think that that would be apology and a thank you too. Okay. Um, and just, you also, know, see how he's doing. You know, I wonder if he's getting some help with all this stuff. What are they doing? I mean, they always say sometimes we need counseling over stuff like this. You know, if you see a horrible accident, we get that. But have we have that? I know, I know we're talking about money, but mm-hmm. that's stuff that we may can do too. And then that's one way of healing. You know, mm-hmm. maybe if we all took some, I don't know. It's like I've just been taking a lot of the DE, DEI courses too, and it's been really wonderful on things I never thought about. So I also want to um, just point out that what was read is theoretically part one of five parts of really? a holistic apology. Um, 
because once again, how to apologize at the top. Uh -huh. um, part one is apologize. Oh, part yeah. two is name the hurt and harm caused. Mm -hmm. Part three is name the impact of that hurt and harm. Part four is take responsibility by naming our actions. And part five is commit to not doing the harm again. And I hear you, Danielle, when you said that we kind of combined a lot of this into one, um, you know, into one thing, and we didn't go kind of like paragraph by paragraph. But some of the things that are missing here um, is kind of a commitment to moving forward in how we're going to change the operations. And I think um, we are also missing uh, naming some of this impact um, because we apologize for specific things and we definitely say like how um, some of some of the aspects caused uh, certain misunderstandings or um, you know outright hurts because we didn't act on things. Um, but I still I don't think that's really naming naming the full impact uh, to the communities that um, that were affected. <clears throat> I would recommend, so I, I strongly believe that we hit issues one through four paragraphs, like bullet points one through four in most of these paragraphs. And if we think that like we're not naming the impact enough, I would recommend adding a line or adding in to what exists here already, that impact, whatever we missed. And then I would recommend doing the commitments to not doing the harm and the naming of how we're going to you know, change our process as our concluding paragraph. I don't think we can do times five. Like this needs to right. be something legible. Right. I'm not saying that we need to write, you know, what is this? Uh, write two pages for each of the five sections. Um, I'm, I'm, I just want to be the voice here that's saying like, this is not complete. So, we have at the bottom um, lots of sections that describe naming the impact. So, um, and some notes around that from our previous meeting. Does anyone want to share any impact that is not named? I can take notes on it and then give it better language later. So, this is towards the page four. I read, should I read it out loud? Please. Uh, first and foremost. These are really rough notes. I like, you can read it out loud, but I don't know how. All right, I won't read it out loud if you don't feel comfortable. Oh, here. Um, I think this this line, um, it hurts not to see yourself and to see a council take steps that prevent people from seeing themselves. Um, I think that's something that we can elaborate um, and expand into, into the rest of it a little bit more. That would be near um, at the very top, which is to the communities that were excluded specifically right jesse yeah um does anyone have anything they want to expound upon related to that idea <clears throat> I mean, I would say something about how uh, historically um, uh, even uh, artistic committees 
um, have been operating under the uh, in a mold of uh, quote unquote tradition, which usually means um, white cis heteronormative confines and um, not analyzing those before going into a um, a juried exhibition that is supposed to be open for everybody in our community uh, with and at the same time saying that we want to um, be inclusive. Um, those stand diametrically opposed. And before entering into that type of uh, exhibition again, we would need to find out how to move forward while still how to move forward in a way that um, addresses addresses this. I have a recommendation or proposal. So I took those notes, Jesse. Mm -hmm. Rather than saying for the for the next step of what how to do it differently, rather than saying if we ever like when we do an exhibition again, I would just like I don't want to commit to that mm -hmm. first of all, and or imply it, and then second of all, I would say we should just apply that to all of our programming, like everything yes. we do. Yeah, I sorry, I didn't mean when I said like exhibition, I was trying to think of a better word, but that's what came out. Yes, I agree with that. Um, I think in hearing people, you know, some of the, uh, the discussion and reading through this, I worry that this is just getting a way far away from its original intent. Um, I think, you know, like expounding and like, you know, I think it's get, it's getting way off the mark and it's starting to blur the point and like of who, what we were trying to do or what the intent of this was. Um, Which was? Well, no, the apology, but like uh, it's getting, it's to me, it's, it's get it. We're going too far afield of and trying to, um, trying to account for everything that we can possibly do to fix everything in this one the, that's supposed to be out an apology whereas like so that to me that's the focus all of these other action steps are something we can reference them in the end saying like we're going to take this and apply it like a danielle said apply it to all of what we do i don't think we need to this the this is getting to, to me it's coming too far away from an apology to people and it's becoming it's like now we're adding in uh, some historical things. We're adding in some action items. Where, so it's becoming not an apology document or an apology statement. It's becoming something else that I, I just wonder about, like how, if it's gonna be uh, as well received. Um, and then uh, the other part I've been trying to think about how to, to mention, is you know we're apologizing to these people you know uh but for some of these folks uh i wonder if apologies to certain people mentioned is going to further uh impact those other people so you know for those of us that were there or, or attending the meeting some of the people mentioned in this document may said things about other people that are in the document and I worry that apologizing to the person who said the things is going to make it worse for the other people. Also, if, you follow, if, if you, everybody could follow that, I was purposely trying not to use names. Yeah. But uh, so, yeah, I just, this, I think is, yeah. Kind of related, Eamon. I, so I do think like, there is a name that's like glaringly missing to me that has not, or at the time was not listed as a recipient of apology. And that, and I'll say like, that's Doris because like she submitted art to a, a jury for a show. Like she didn't like sign up for that. And the right. way our process went haywire, like 
she kind of like got dragged into it in a really public way and like if the jury process had gone as it should like maybe they would have seen like oh that this might offend someone in indigenous community or it might not like those conversations could have been had by the jury and could have been had like well in advance of the week before the show if our process had gone as it should have and it wouldn't have been like a whole public thing where like an artist kind of got like dragged um like who was just trying to like submit work for a show like you know I think that's another uh thing to consider yeah yeah I, I yeah I agree with that um you know so that that's a concern I have I don't know what the solution right now is or the artful solution is but I think it's a little problematic that we're in the same document we're apologizing to person a who during the meeting person a uh was impacting persons b c d e and f you know what i mean um also worth mentioning that the more you apologize to specific people the more you are inherently excluding yes specific yes yeah. um so i would kind of vote like going more general <laughs> i know there's this has all been in place a certain structure it was done a certain way um uh, but i i totally agree with that point um and then uh the other thing i'm just you know again in the second paragraph it kind of this it starts to get us on a journey of going too far afield like you know this is supposed to be an apology about the biennial but in, you know in that second paragraph we've already started veering off what i all say veering off course um you know by you know that by any event that happened during our tenure on the council like so what i think you know it should as much as possible keep the focus on the actual matter at hand and and in the end we can say hey, we're going to take all this as a you know as a linchpin for looking at everything we do i don't think there's a need to like do it in the way that it's currently formed here I mean, I think that's going to dilute the entire thing down to a normal apology, which is exactly what we're trying not to do, where a normal apology is insincere and really doesn't do anything to anybody. And part of the reason why we're going into all of these details is because there is so much uh, that isn't working on this Arts Council um, and hasn't been because of historic issues. And so without naming those, we're not sincerely saying that we want to change those. But Jesse, my concern is that by naming that like white supremacy structure is what makes us screwed up as an organization, we're actually not taking responsibility. And um, by, na by naming that, I, I think it's also being diluted that, yeah. to Jesse's point. It's there's some dilution by throwing in these things that you see in many documents of this nature, where it's sort of becoming uh, uh, what's I don't know what the right word is, but it's becoming like uh, something people like boilerplate almost, and it turns people off. I've been told by members of you know various minority and BIPOC communities, um, so it's almost as seen as you know, if you're trying to say like you know, the white cis man that, that that immediately turns people off from receiving the message. Um, I, I don't know, I don't know about that. Um, you don't need to charge up it, it will last forever. Um, okay, I got new batteries. Is it is it, is it Iman who was talking? Yeah, Iman. Iman, hey, I, I was just I well, I just was listening to every word that you said. You said something, and and I, I wanted you to repeat it because it, it it resonated with me. What did you say? Oh, it's Oh, what part? Oh, here. Oh, here. Uh, you said something like, "Well, this is what I was thinking when you were talking." Because sometimes, guys, I mean. There are times I have to ask what BIPOC is. I can't remember, <laughs> you know, people of color, communities of color. So, I mean, we want to include everyone because, you know, like me, I'm also Native American, but it's indigenous. All right. Okay. So you were saying sometimes when we're doing that, it kind of, people are like, it's not that they're saying what, but sometimes when we're doing that and we, 
I, what I liked about this thing is when we personalize it, but I do see that we have to get to the points that were great. But when you personalize it, some of the wording is fun, but I don't know who uses the words like that. And I'm not trying to say anything like, oh, let's dumb it down. I'm just, you know, what they say sometimes the lawyers keep it simple, sweetheart, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, so that's what I was just thinking, because part of when we're going there, I feel like I'm in my, um, you know, graduate college course, and I don't want to act like I don't know the word. So that, that was the only thing. I mean, and yeah, that, that's the only thing that kind of like, I had to think about it, but I'm not saying that people won't, but if this is an apology and we're putting it in record and everything like that, you might just want to think about that. That's all. Mm -hmm. I put something in the group chat. I can't see it. All right. Uh, I was wondering if we could focus on the first part of apology on Sunday the 20th and then commit to more special meetings to address all the issues. Because like, to me, we're trying to focus on getting everything done on one in two hours, which is like, we can't fix historical issues for in two hours. So I was wondering if, the council wanted to commit to multiple meetings that we can work on a living document. Um, I think it's worth discussing also if if we're in if you're going into the year 2023, how much in terms of resources do we want to spend on writing this document? Or is this like a subcommittee thing that branches yeah. off? Because if we're going to spend like eight hours on this apology, is that is that how the 2023 Arts Council wants to function. We're not allowed, Garrett. We're not allowed to have subcommittees and right. any document, like the, I could write something, anyone can write something alone and bring right. it to the meeting to be approved by everyone and discussed by everyone. Okay. Open meeting guess, stuff. Yeah, but I guess, I guess the question I have is like this year or in next year, like how many hours it broad broad scope how many hours do we want to spend on this because we're talking about now scheduling like multiple special meetings that are two hours long each just for the apology okay i think i don't know I, like i said i wasn't there i, I mean well I that wouldn't like be apology. just for the apology right it would be for doing an equity audit of all of our work and like combating the system impact that jesse named right it's essentially taking what the equity committee, former like subcommittee, equity subcommittee was doing privately and just making it part of everyone's work because we're not allowed subcommittees. There's three minutes left for this meeting. So are there any more comments in the document? <laughs> more notes to add before we close. Oh, so, okay, sorry, just to clarify. Um, we are allowed to have subcommittees, but the, all subcommittees can, they can only meet according to open meeting law. So that means that the subcommittee needs to submit their agenda uh, two business days in advance to city hall. It needs to be posted online with a public Zoom link. There needs to be public comment. There needs to be minutes and it needs to run as this meeting would run. So there could be a subcommittee or, you know, not everyone has to show up to that where they're working on the uh, apology and then bring it to the full board. I don't know about quor how quorum would work with that. I don't, I don't know. You, I, I don't think it's a meeting that is called to order. So I'll ask. I think it's like a public working meeting. Okay. I'll look into it. But in terms of the agenda for um the special meeting i'm sorry i had taken notes and i just can't find it okay um i think just want to articulate that i heard that our goals are to amend the divide between um the arts community um to determine key takeaways for our process so that we can avoid the same situation in the future and hear from folks what they feel would be restorative and possibly continue editing or vote on approving the apology document as it will be revised between now and then. 
Does that feel right to folks? Yes. Like in my head, in the, yes. Thank you. And how do you want to structure? Do you want to do work on it in the meeting for like an hour? The all the things you just said, and then the second part, we like an hour, we leave for public feedback. If we're going to be working on it based on what we are asking the public to let us know how they would like to see restorative justice um, be supported for them, I think we need to hear the public first. Can we do like uh, two public comments, but we talk a little bit, we have some business and then public comment and then more business and then another public comment? Okay. Okay. I mean, I think we can do whatever we want. It's just yeah. a matter of how much time we want to allot for that. Right. We can also do the discussion of the apology document in like draft, let's call it draft two, even though it's really like draft, draft 30. Um, draft two, discuss, um, continue with our meeting, then have public comment about impact and um, in draft three, incorporate anything yeah. that is raised and then approve it at our next meeting, That's our regular, good. our regular council meeting. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I like it. Okay. Nine o'clock. Thanks right. to everybody for coming. Thank you. See you next uh, Thank you all. next next week. A little earlier. Uh oh, what do you guys want to eat next week? I'm hungry now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll try us. I won't even be here to enjoy it. I'll be out of town. November 15th, you'll be here. No, I won't. I'll be uh, oh, you'll still be at a convention. No, no, no. I'll be at a convention. Okay. I just wanted to confirm it's at 6 p.m. Uh, next week. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And if there will be food at City Hall, and mm -hmm. you can also join on Zoom. Cool. Yep. Send some of the food to Denver's in the meeting. Then I'm okay. <laughs> Appreciate it, y'all. Maybe in Denver. My parents you're, live in Denver. Really? You're gonna get. You're gonna get an edible arrangement. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>